right. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Susan, and I'm going to go over the latest um, news brief. And as always, if there's a news article that you want me to go more in depth with, or um, or if you think that there's something that I've missed and that I should talk about, I. Of course, let me know and I will make a video about it provided I have the information and because I'm not going to talk solely out of my ass. I want at least some fact. Okay, and away we go. Starting with the U.S. news and the big story that's happening in the U.S., a Chinese spy balloon has been flying over the United States for a couple of days, U.S. officials said, in what would be a brazen act just days ahead of a planned trip to Beijing by Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Fighter jets were mobilized, but military leaders advised President Joe Biden against shooting the balloon out of the sky for fear debris could pose a safety threat. Now, first of the that was Joe Biden's first thought. Reminds you that he's a war hawk. You know, let's not forget that that, that was his thing. Um, secondly, um, they've postponed, well, they said they canceled. The White House is, well, the White House, the State Department has said they've canceled Secretary Blinken's trip to Beijing. Now, whether, now this is after both a retired general, U.S. retired general, and the Chinese have said that it's a weather balloon, which it could be. And the retired general was saying that you can see that it doesn't have its own power source, that it looks like a scientific balloon, and that it's just going with the currents, the air currents, which could be. Unfortunately, now Canada is saying that they found a second incident, which, what are the chances <laughs> that we would have two weather balloons flying over North America? So, mm, on the one hand, it makes sense. On the other hand, why are there two in the same area, general area? So I just listened to the latest Pentagon briefing, and it continues to, the weather balloon continues to move eastward, and that it's currently over, um, over the central U.S. So... Obviously, there is nothing there, and um, statements have been issued saying that they that Pentagon officials do not suspect any military or personal danger in um, in this balloon. So it sounds like they accept that it's a weather balloon, but still they postponed. Well, they said canceled the planned trip to Beijing. So even though it's a weather balloon, I guess they want to make sure that it's not doing anything untoward because I assume they can be modified or something. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Um, the House Republicans ousted Democrat Ilhan Omar from a high-profile committee over remarks widely condemned as anti-Semitic two years after Democrats removed two Republicans from committee assignments. The House voted 218 to 211 along party lines to remove Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee, with Republicans citing the 2019 remarks for which she later apologized. Okay. Now, I'm not going to... Um, defend what Om Omar's remarks because it was anti-Semitic and hella stupid. But at the same time, 
And plus, she didn't help herself in her defense by claiming that they're coming after her because she's a Muslim from Africa. Um, no, no, actually, in this, in this instance, I don't think the fact that you are a person of color had fuck all to do with this. Now, are they petty enough to have done something like that? Absolutely. Do I think that that's the case in this instance? No, no, I don't. Why? Because, well, first off, she's super progressive. She's part of the squad. So, there's that. She's super progressive. She, yes, she made comments that are anti-Israel, but we, we should really stop assuming anti-Israel and anti-Semitic are the same thing. Has she said anti-Semitic comments? Absolutely. The fact that she attacked Israel, not one of them. Um, so, um, so there's that. So I'm, I'm not a fan of hers, so I'm not going to defend her. But on the other hand, the Republicans have proven that they're petty little bitches. And the reason I say that is because they're keeping a couple of other Democrats who haven't said stupid shit in the past from committee assignments as well. I mean, in this case, Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell. Now, their reasoning for Swalwell is because he slept with a Chinese spy whom he didn't know was a Chinese spy at the time. Well, let me see. Um... That's been rectified, and seriously, just because he made one mistake, you're going to hold it against him for the rest of his life? I mean, you know, you, you can't go through life assuming that someone is a spy just because they want to sleep with you. I mean, he's a good-looking dude. I mean... <laughs> I don't know why people assume that he's going, because I guess they assume he did it on purpose. I think he knew she was a spy, even though it's been proven he, he had no clue. And he didn't get in trouble for it. Well, Republicans are getting him into trouble, but that's because they're assholes. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, basically, if you take it all as a whole, they are just um, getting back at the Democrats for keeping Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar off committee assignments two years ago for, oh, saying threatening th shit about Democrats and in Marge's case, you know, being a white nationalist um, dickweed. Paul Gosar, in this latest election campaign, threatened AOC, regardless of what you think of AOC. That is not a behavior of a congressperson. You do not threaten your colleagues with death just because you don't agree with them. I mean, come on. That is just stupid. So... So they get committee assignments under this new Congress, but let's keep other Democrats off off committees because, well, we're, like I said, they're petty bitches, so. All right. And the shit just keeps on coming. A U.S. appeals court declared unconstitutional a federal law making it a crime for people under domestic violence restraining orders to own firearms. The decision is the latest victory for gun rights right, oh my God, for gun rights advocates since a Supreme Court ruling last June granting a broad right for people to carry firearms outside the home. So what could possibly go wrong with that? Let's see. Oh, you're under a restraining order? Oh, absolutely. Arm yourself to the teeth. What could possibly, what could you possibly do with those guns? It's not like you're going to um, ignore the restraining order and kill the person that 
put the restraining order on you because, you know, you're a domestic abuser. Nah, that couldn't be it. Yeah, that, yeah, nothing bad could happen from this. Oh, my God. All right. Nearly 1,000 migrant children separated at the U.S.-Mexico border by the administration of former President Donald Trump have yet to be reunited with their parents, despite a two-year effort by Biden. Maybe at this point the parents truly believe that the kids are better off without them. Maybe that's why they can't find them. I just, I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know why why it's taking so long to reunite these kids. I mean, do these parents do these parents suspect some sort of switcheroo that if they come to claim the kid that they're going to get arrested? I really wonder why why these kids have not been been reunited with their parents. Um All right. Three former US snowboarders sued their former coach, the National Snowboarding Federation, and the US Olympic Committee alleging sexual abuse that was covered up by the two sporting bodies. Court documents showed. Now I've got to see if, are we docking women accusing men as usual, or is this something new? Nope. Female female snowboarders, male male coach. Oh, for fuck's sake! Let's see the the women's national soccer league. In the U.S. had this issue. Women's gymnastics. And now women's snowboarding. What is with these men. Who think that. Because they're. In a. Helping. In a women's sport. Helping women. That that gives them the right. To take advantage of this. What. What is wrong with these men. Makes me wonder if the only men who want to be in these positions of power are just doing it just so they could get laid or something. Because maybe maybe they're insults. Maybe they couldn't get laid any other way. I mean, what the hell? And with the U.S. gymnasts, that's even worse because none of them are adults. Ugh. That's just... I'm glad that this is coming to light, but it's still disgusting. And men wonder why, why women say men are pigs. Hmm. Well, maybe because everywhere we turn, we find more men who do this shit. <sighs> yes, I know that this that. Power dynamics work work with women, with men underlings, but more often we're hearing about it this way, so. All right, let's move on to world news. Air raid alerts sounded across Ukraine as European leaders were in the country's capital to discuss further sanctions on Russia and Ukraine's prospects of joining the European bloc with President Volodymyr Zelensky. <sighs> I don't know. Um, if, if these European leaders are in the country and something were to happen to one or more of them, would that cause truly World War III? I mean, I don't know if it was known that they were there, because sometimes it's secretive. So, I don't want to find that one out. That's one of many questions I don't need an answer to. Pope Francis wrapped up an emotional visit to Democratic Republic of Congo and headed to neighboring South Sudan, another nation struggling to overcome decades of conflict and grinding poverty. 
The country's woes were underscored on the eve of his arrival when 27 people were killed in South Sudan's central Ecuadoria state in tit-for-tat violence. <sighs> Iranian Nobel Peace Prize laureate um, Shirin Ibadi said the death in custody of a young Iranian Kurdish woman last year has sparked an irreversible revolutionary process that would eventually lead to the collapse of the Islamic Republic. Here's hoping. Ibadi has been one of the most outspoken supporters of the anti-government demonstrations. It would be awesome if the Islamic Republic went down and that it was their own, own stupidity their own hatred of women that would cause this because that's that should be the reason that women stand up to their oppressors they they deserve this shit they really do especially when they do things like oh a, a couple um an engaged couple are dancing in the square. Oh, well, we can't have that. So we're going to sentence you to death. Yeah, that that that's going to make people love you so much more. So, yeah. I hope I hope it, that the Islamic Republic goes down. Hopefully that'll make things so much more peaceful. So much, um, so much easier to deal with Iran because they won't be headed by someone who, by a country who says death to America the way kids say the Pledge of Allegiance. Whether they believe it or not, you have to say it. So, all right. Under pressure from Afghanistan's Taliban administration, the United Nations is delivering some food aid using men only, prompting warnings from donors and humanitarian groups that it could be seen as giving in to an internationally condemned ban on mostly female aid workers. I have mixed emotions about that. Yes, it's giving in. I will admit that. But at the same time, which would you rather have? giving in and making sure that these poor people who had nothing to do with the Taliban being raging assholes um, give, make sure that they survive or do we you know, not feed them in which case the whole country starves except for the Taliban. Now you could say that um by not helping them, that will get them to rise up against the Taliban. But, I don't know if there are enough people to rise up against the Taliban. I really don't, because so many men, that, that's why we had such problem, and why back in the 70s, Russia had a problem with Afghanistan. The, the people are not helping their cause at all. Many of them believe in what the Taliban is selling. They just, you know, don't like that they're not getting food, maybe, but, you know, that their livelihoods are being... But a good amount of them actually like the Taliban. So... On the one hand, this way you're helping the people who need to, the help, but, you know, because the people who are getting the help, this is not going to make them like the Taliban anymore. They're not going to suddenly say, oh, well, we're getting food aid, so I guess we won't stand up to the Taliban. I think it's much more complicated than that. It's about... um well, first off, you never, there are Taliban sympathizers all over the place. So it's, and women are generally not in a position to stand up. You know, like in Iran, 
I'm sure one of the main reasons that that protest has gotten off the ground is because the men are also supporting it. Because, let's face it, men have the power, especially in a place like Iran or Afghanistan. So without their help, you're not going to make that progress. So, so I see what the, what the humanitarian groups are saying, but at the same time, I don't see this as if they were going to stand up to the Taliban, they're going to do it whether they're getting food aid from outside or not. So, yeah. Police in Assam have arrested more than 1,800 men for marrying or arranging marriage to underage girls, launching what the Eastern Indian state's chief minister said was the start of a sustained crackdown on the practice. Marriage under 18 is illegal in India, but the law is openly flouted. <sighs> That's great. All right, so let us end this with business and markets. Both houses of India's parliament were adjourned amid chaotic scenes as some lawmakers demanded an inquiry following the meltdown of shares in billionaire Gautam Adani's group, group companies, which some fear could spark wider financial turmoil. All righty. Business activity in the Eurozone bounced back to, to growth in January, according to a survey which suggested the bloc's economy might again escape a contraction this quarter and that the upturn may accelerate Britain's service. Wait, may so may up. Let's try that again. Um, escape a contraction this quarter and that the upturn may accelerate. All right. Britain's services sector kicked off 2023 with its weakest performance in two years, hit by cutbacks to business and consumer spending. Yeah, it's kind of hard when a lot of businesses are like, yeah, we're leaving Britain. <laughs> we prefer the EU. That's, that's not helping. But, um, yeah, but at least something is happening, something good moving something is moving in the right direction u.s job growth likely remained strong in january it did amid a persistently resilient labor market but an anticipated further slowdown in wage gains show should give the federal reserve some comfort in its fight against inflation the Labor Department's closely watched report today is also expected to show the unemployment rate ticking up to 3.6 percent last month okay there's good things about this and bad things. First off, um, the U.S. Um, added 512,000 jobs in January, more than what economists predicted. So that's good. And I just saw that Joe Biden, um, a Joe Biden statement that unemployment actually ticked down to 3.4%. But what the fuck kind of system are do we have when... People are celebrating a slowdown in wages and an uptick in unemployment. I just don't think that that's a really good system if that's, if that's the thing. It's like, oh, we have this sweet spot where only so many people can be working and wages should only be so high. That just does not sound like a good system to me. Because, I mean, eventually the goods that you want to sell will be too pricey for, the, for people to buy them. And then where are you? So if for no other reason, if, even if you don't care about the people who are poor, I just do not see how this is beneficial for anybody. All right. Big tech led U.S. markets on a sharp rebound to kick off 2023. The message from their earnings yesterday, not so fast. Apple, Google, Parent, Com Parent Alphabet, and Amazon.com all posted results for the end of the year quarter that left a sour taste in investors' mouths. All right, that sounds like a humongous contradiction, but okay. 
All right, Ford said quarterly profits fell and the automaker predicted a difficult year ahead, sending its shares down after the bell as investors were disappointed following this week's robust report from rival General Motors. Billionaire investor Ryan Cohen is building a large stake in Nordstrom and plans to push the upscale retailer to shake up its board as its performance has lagged behind rivals, people familiar with the matter said. Oh, that took a good time for my eyes to go stupid. All right. So, um, also... Japanese startup, se <clears throat> startup selling a Star Wars-inspired hover bike to list on NASDAQ. And I have to pick up my phone and show you guys this because it's super cool. Let's get a close-up here. Yeah, that bike looks really, really And I hope I didn't just make you guys sick. All right. Um... Let's see if there's anything else. Roman Sewer Works reveals statue of Emperor posing as Hercules. What? What is this? Uh, a life-size statue of a Roman emperor posing as the classical hero Hercules has been discovered during sewer repair works near the Appia Antica, or Apian Way, ancient Rome's first highway. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is quite cool. All right, and with that, I believe I am done with this news brief, and I will see you guys tomorrow.